disclaimer for listeners here. There's some graphic shit about to be said. It's all fictional, but just to let you know, that's about to happen. So the 120 Days of Sodom are the school of libertinage, basically how to school someone in being a libertine. <laughs> described as both pornographic and erotic, was written in 1785. Sod himself described the work as the most impure tale that has ever been told since the world began. <laughs> it's a catalog of, I guess, like basic darkest human desires, which is what uh, Sod, as a libertine, was always advocating. A libertine is someone who, without moral or social constraints acts on sexual desires. Doesn't care about the morality of the sexuality of it. We're doing this shit, it's on, you know what I mean? So it tells the story of four wealthy male libertines who resolve to experience the ultimate sexual gratification in the orgies. In order to do this, they seal themselves away for four months in an inaccessible castle with a harm of 36 victims, mostly male and female teenagers. One thing to note about the four protagonists here is that they are all degenerate aristocrats. So right. an argument has been made and can be made that, again, Desaad is satirizing the excess of the wealthy bourgeoisie ruling class. Absolutely, yeah. I'm inclined to read it that way. This is what happens when the ruling class indulges their fucking uh, uh, bourgeoisie appetites as well. Right. Again, one way to read this, right? With them are four accomplished prostitutes, middle-aged women, who they relate the anecdotes of their careers that inspire the principal character's depraved acts, right? Now, here's the victims. This is where it gets really bad. The victims are the daughters of those four bourgeoisie aristocrats whom they've been sexually abusing for years. All of the daughters die except for one. She's spared because she becomes a libertine herself. The other victims are eight boys and eight girls, ranged from 12 to 15. They've all been kidnapped and chosen because of their beauty. They're also all virgins, and the libertines plan on deflowering them vaginally and especially anally. Here's the plot. Now you have all the principal characters, right? The prostitutes take turns telling five stories each day relating to their fetishes of their most interesting clients. The four months are separated into what Desaad termed the four passions. And these passions are separated into four categories. November is the simple passions. They're simple because they don't include actual penetration. Well, okay. They don't <laughs> include penetration, but they're still not. They're still Desaad passions. It's still, it still gets crazy here. The antidotes include tales of men who like to indulge in urine drinking and scatologically with their daughters and the other kidnapped children, the other victims we've already been over. December, the complex passions. These are more extravagant perversions. There's, uh, there's vaginal rape now. There's incest, flagellation, tales of men who indulge in sacrilegious activities. And January, it escalates. And now the criminal passions, the tales include men who prostitute their own daughters to other perverts and watch their proceedings, and others who mutilate women by tearing off their fingers or burning them with red-hot pokers. During the month, the four libertines begin having anal sex with the 16 male and female children. February, the pinnacle, it escalates. The last of the four passions, the last fourth month, right? We're entering into the final 120 days of Sodom. The murderous passions. The final tale details the hell libertine who masturbates while watching 15 teenage girls being simultaneously tortured to death. Ugh. Yeah. During this month, the libertines kill three of the four. Like we said, we, they let one of them live. The murder of one of the girls, 15-year-old Augustine, is described in great detail with the torture she is subjected to, including having her flesh stripped from her limbs, her vagina being mutilated, and her intestines being pulled out of her sliced open belly and burned. Jesus. Yeah, graphic. But again, have you read American Psycho? Yeah, it's. I mean, really, it's not. Right. I mean, other than we, having more of it, it's the same stuff. That's an example of this kind of stuff that he wrote, which I do feel is in stark contrast to the way that he lived. He never killed anybody. He didn't. He didn't go to this excess in his own life. Right. right. So I guess now we can ask, why the fuck are we talking about him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's definitely deviant. There's De no doubt definitely, about that. definitely deviant. We have the word sadism because of him, and he um, sort of paved the way for for the BDSM culture in general. And there's people that are championing him for like this sex positivity and for championing like kinky desires. But then that's the big issue with Saad is consent and the question of art versus the artist. The question remains: Are they satire or fantasy? You have to kind of take into account that this was at a very 
Puritan time. Mm-hmm. Very like religious dom, and that yeah. he was rebellious, and that he hated a lot of that stuff. He hated the religious aspect. He so then, how much is shock so, value? Yeah, how <laughs> much is shock value? How? Yeah, exactly. He's an important deviant because he's still to this day stirring this kind of debate. <laughs> <laughs>